Hi, it's Adam with webstarts.com. And in this short video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a website for your classroom. So school's coming back in uh, around the country. And this time of year, teachers are preparing to go back to class. Of course, this year is a little bit different than other years. And it's probably more important than ever has been to have a website for your classroom. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a free website using Web Starts for your classroom. All right, Web Starts is great because you don't need to know how to write any code to create a website. There's also no software to download or install on your computer. All you do is log in from any connected device to make changes and updates to your website. And Web Starts is loaded with features, and that means that it has a lot of capability. So just about anything you see on a website, you can do with Web Starts in one way or another. All right, before I jump into the video, I want to invite you to tap the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I release a video on web design, internet marketing, search engine optimization, and things that are important to you if you're doing things on the web. All right, so I've created this website for Mrs. Johnson. It's a classroom website, and there are a few things that I wanna call your attention to about this website that I think you'll find helpful if you're running a classroom. The first thing is that uh, this website has a login, so your students can sign up and they can log in with their own credentials, and that way you can protect the lesson plans that you share and things like that uh, from prying eyes or just anybody getting access to your classroom or whatever you, you want to have behind that login. So I think that that's a helpful and valuable feature that you can use with Web Starts. It's called the membership app, and I'll show you how to use that in just a moment. And then the next thing I want to call your attention to is that you can and this is especially critical for this year, you can link right to a Zoom meeting. So if you're one of the many teachers that are affected by the things going on in the world this year, and you're going to be hosting your class remotely through a Zoom meeting, uh, you'll be glad to know that you can add a link right to your Zoom meeting. And then uh, whoever would like to join that meeting can enter their Zoom meeting ID and uh, just participate in the meeting. And I'll show you how to do that with your website as well as all of the other things that I have here. All right, to get started, you're going to wanna sign up for a webstarts.com account. So let me move over there and show you how to do that. Okay, go to webstarts.com. You can just type that in the address bar and then click get started, it's free. And in the next step, you're going to choose a design for your website. All of the templates are 100% customizable and they can be changed at any time. So you don't need to spend a ton of time and energy going through all of these designs. Just select one that you think more or less looks like you could customize it to make it your own. You can search for the design by category. So there are some here in the business category uh, along with of course, all of these other categories. So you can find one that's relevant. Community and education might be a good one if you're a teacher. When you're ready to select a design, you just click select. Then in the next step, you're gonna do the normal stuff that you've come to expect when signing up for a web application. You're just gonna enter your full name, your email address, you're gonna choose a password, and click sign up. After you do that, there's a short verification process just to make sure you're not a spammer or robot. And then after that, you'll choose a web address and then you'll log in and enter the dashboard. Now I've already created a Web Starts account, so I'm not gonna walk you through that part. Instead, what I'm going to do is just close this out and log into my existing account. So this is what you'll do if you come back to the website. You'll just click log in. Then you'll enter your email address and password. Oops, I need to select the right account. Click log in. Once you're logged into your Web Starts account, you're going to be in what's called the dashboard view. 
The dashboard view will have multiple websites that you can select up in the top left. So if you want to create more than one website in your web starts account, you can do that by selecting create new website right there. You have a little notifications bell. This lets you know when somebody's visited your website or other important notifications that have to do with your website. Like if somebody left a comment on your blog, that sort of thing. Then you have this drop down menu up here. There you can find things like your settings, billing if you have that, and domain name and some other things, including help. Here you can see a link to your website. So you can share that with people to get them to find your website online, or you can just enter that into the address bar up here. Down below, we have all of these panels. The blue panels indicate that an application is active for your website. So for example, uh, these blue panels indicate that this site has the blog enabled roles and permission files and folders. The gray ones just mean that those applications haven't been enabled yet, but you can enable those by clicking on them. When you're ready to begin making edits and changes to the pages of your website, just click edit site. And that's going to load what's called the page editor. In the page editor, you can add elements to your page by clicking over here and then just selecting the type of element. All of the elements are drag and drop and they can be placed wherever you want them to appear. One important thing to consider while creating your website is that anything that you place above this line is going to appear at the top of each page. This is done so that things like your logo and your menu are located in the exact same location on each page of your website and there's no need to go into each page and tediously place them in the exact same spot. You can select the various pages of your website to edit from the drop down menu in the top left. And if you'd like to create a new page, you just click new page. I'm not going to get into every aspect of how to create or design your website in this video. And instead I'm going to focus on those features that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, like creating a membership login and also creating a link to your Zoom meeting for your website. Okay, the first one that I wanna cover is the membership uh, feature or application. Uh, you can find the widget to sign in log in up here on my page, but if you don't have that on your design, you'll need to first add it. And the way you do that is you click add and you scroll down the list of things that you can add and you select membership. This brings up the membership wizard and you'll need to answer some questions about the membership before you can add it to your page. The first one is if you want to make this particular page accessible only to members. And if the answer is no, then go ahead and click continue. But if you want people to have to log in to view this page, be sure to select the yes option. Now be careful because I'm on the home page, and if you require a member login for your home page, nobody will be able to even get to your basic web address without logging in. So they're not going to see anything without a login when they come to your website. It's probably not what you want for the most part. So if you're on the home page, uh, just go ahead and click no unless you want to require people to log in to see anything at all on your website. All right. Clicking continue, the next thing I do is I specify the page where I would like my site visitors to be taken after they sign up and log in for a membership. So I'm gonna select the option for members area and then click continue, but that can be any page on your website. All right, how do you want to approve members? There are two ways that you can approve members of your website. One is automatically and the other one is manually. So if you just want your members to be approved and you don't want to review or know who's signing up, just select the automatic option. Then the people who sign up can get in there right away with their username and password. If you select the option to manually approve your members, it will require you to approve the member before they can log in. So do keep that in mind. I'm going to select the option to manually approve new members and click continue because I wanna show you what that looks like in this video. All right, now it's asking me if I want to add the membership login widget to this particular page. I already have the membership login widget on this page. So I'm gonna select no, but if you want to put that little sign up and log in, like what's up here, you would select yes. Okay, that actually removed it from the page. So not what I wanted. But uh, if you do want to bring that back, you can just click on membership, no members area, I'll approve people automatically. And then I want the widget on the page. Now I'm gonna drag and drop that membership sign in widget 
up to the top right there. And then I'm also gonna change the color of the widget to white so it's easier to see. Now when I make a, save my changes by clicking on the save option and then click view site, you'll notice that I have my little sign up and log in link here in the top right. All right, so if I go to my members only page, you see it doesn't require me or doesn't allow me to see anything without first logging in. So do keep that in mind. All the other pages of my website are accessible though without requiring a login. Only the ones that I specified uh, require a login. So just whatever parts of your website you want people to log in in order to see, just make sure that you specify that in that membership wizard as you go through it on each page. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is show you where to go to approve a member. So when somebody signs up and you have manual approval enabled, like what we did, uh, they're gonna receive an email saying, hey, you can't get in yet, you gotta wait for an approval. And you're gonna get a notification and an email as well. So you'll get a notification back out uh, on the dashboard and you'll also get a notification through email. And then what you'll have to do is log in and then click approval in the membership app. So I'm back out on the dashboard and I'm scrolling to the bottom. I select site members. There I can see my site members and then I just click not approved until it says approved. And that's going to allow that member to come back and log in. Now, once I do that, they're gonna receive an email saying they were approved. You can change the email address that you send that email from right up here if you click edit. If you don't want it to be the email address you used when you signed up to create a Web Starts account. Now you can also edit things about this member's uh, information, like their name, their email address, and their password. So if somebody lost their password, you can go in here, you can reset it for them, that kind of thing. You can also delete members and you can uh, bulk approve and disapprove members over here on the left. All right, let me show you how to get back to the dashboard by clicking up here in the top right, clicking on my dashboard. And now I'm gonna show you how to add that Zoom meeting link to your website. So I'm gonna click edit site to go back into the page editor. And then I'm going to show you how I did it with this social bar. This is called a social bar, that's what we call it. And you add it to your page by clicking add and then going down and finding a social bar right here. And then you select the social networks that you want to link to in your social bar. There are some already pre-populated by default, but you can add more just by clicking the add more button. And in this example, I would select Zoom, and then you can see that Zoom is added to the bottom. You can rearrange the order of these because you might not like the order or you can delete ones that you don't wanna use. So like, I don't wanna use phone, email, LinkedIn, that kind of stuff. I can just delete it by clicking that X. Now to link to a Zoom meeting, you need to actually enter the zoom.us slash join URL, and then you'll click insert, and that will add the social bar to the page with a link to zoom.us slash join. That's where someone will have to enter their meeting ID in order to join a meeting. Of course, you wouldn't wanna just publicly let anybody stumble into your classroom, so you're not gonna want them to publicly stumble into your uh, online meeting either. And of course, Zoom doesn't allow that. All right, let's continue. Uh, I'm gonna cancel that out because I've already added that to my page, but I'll show you what that looks like on my live website by clicking view site and then clicking on the Zoom icon. And you can just see there I can enter my meeting ID and I can join an existing Zoom meeting. Another thing that I wanted to point out is that you can upload things like your lessons uh, I've created a page here called Members Area, and this is the page that you have to be logged in in order to see. And what I've done here is I've added a PDF file, and it's a mathematics review. And you could put your assignments in here or quizzes or tests or whatever you want. But this page requires people to log in uh, before they're able to view this document. But you can easily add documents to your page just by clicking Add, and then going down to the document option, clicking on that, and then you can either upload PDF files from your local computer as well as Word files, or you can just select ones that you've previously uploaded. So I uploaded this PDF file earlier, so I'm just gonna add it to my page and then drag and drop it where I want it to be displayed. When you're ready, as always, click save, and then that appears on your page. So your students can come to this page 
by logging in and then they can download their assignments. So that's pretty helpful. There's also a built-in calendar application. It links up with Google Calendar. It's displayed just like this. You can double click on it and you can click sign in with Google in order to link your Google Calendar. And you can also choose to display your calendar by month or basic week or whatever works well uh, with your situation. Well, that about does it. When you're ready, if you want to add your own domain name, I guess you'd click add domain name and then that allows you to add something like your very own.com. You can search for the availability. Just keep in mind that that along with a couple of other features do require you to upgrade to a paid subscription. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video and be sure to leave your comments if you have any questions in the section below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and enable notifications. And I'll see you next time. Don't forget to visit webstarts.com to create your very own free website.